Are children inherently untrustworthy? Of course, right? <laughs> if left to manage without the right raising by adults, children will lie, they will steal, and they will even snitch, won't they? I feel like I see this all the time, don't you? Sweet little faces full of chocolate cake, swearing they didn't eat any, liars. That cake they didn't eat, they took without your permission, thieves. And then telling on grandpa for helping them get to the cake, snitches. So it seems the evidence may be pointing in the direction of the reality that you and I as children, like all children, were not to be trusted. Does this indicate then that young humans need time to be taught trustworthiness? Are basically all the trustworthy people adults? Could we never really trust children enough to grant them certain freedoms, like the freedom to decide how they want to spend their time or what they want to learn? And I'm asking because young people sure do push for their freedom, don't they? Either nobody told them or they just don't believe the hype that freedom and trustworthiness don't just come with being a human being. They seem to believe freedom to be a human right. But our collective adult response is usually something like, no, no, honey, freedom is not something you are born deserving. Freedom is something people must earn. Hmm. Freedom is not an inherent human right. This is our collective adult response to children. And I think one reason we push this message is because we adults have fears around what might happen to children, not just in terms of their safety, but also in terms of their life outcome. We are afraid of our children growing up to be untrustworthy or worse, unsuccessful, right? So here's the deal. So we have these fears around raising certain types of people in the world, but the way we assuage these fears is to let them lure us into parenting and educational practices that are themselves rooted in fear and lack of trust. So we wanna raise trustworthy people, but our approach is to control children, their time and their tasks, effectively keeping them far away from the types of life experiences that help to build trust. Essentially, we tend to trust young people based on their level of compliance to us. But is that how trust works? I used to think so. I did. Until I became a parent and witnessed my children's academic growth at the expense of their emotional wellness. And then I couldn't keep buying into that belief system at all. So, then I started to question, what is it that I do believe about my children and learning and the connection between all of that and trust? And it's that connection that fuels these questions, these questions that I'm incessantly asking about the intersection of freedom, childhood, parenting, and trust. And speaking of questions, I don't know if you've caught this, but I've already asked you 11 questions so far. I totally have. That's because I'm invoking what the late great lyricist Christopher Biggie Wallace called mad question asking. <laughs> it's a life skill, y'all. And it's deeply important, especially when questioning one's way to connecting trust and freedom to childhood particularly trusting children with their own learning and with real decision-making towards their own lives. For many of us, this is a type of liberation work. I call it raising free people. And so over time, my mad question asking skills got better and better, and I realized something. Deciding that an entire group of people is inherently untrustworthy until we fix them to be trustworthy is madness and it's dangerous. It's actually orienting us towards toxic and oppressive ideas about what is normal and what is healthy in our relationships. 
And we do these toxic and oppressive things not because we don't love children and want the absolute best for them. We do it, y'all, because we were taught that we were untrustworthy. And so we haven't quite developed the language and practice that roots our parenting and our education in trust instead of fear. So we resort to these oppressive strategies like forced schooling, for example, not because we know that schooling will definitely help us raise trustworthy, liberated people. We do it mostly because it's what we've always seen. Because today in our society, tools of oppression are far more normalized than trust-based practices. And by tools of oppression in the context of school, I mean, for example, systems rooted in the assumption that children are not to be trusted and should therefore be forced to participate in daily punishment and reward-based systems rooted in the notion of knowledge being this top-down thing passed down to an empty vessel learner from a teacher. A teacher who's usually deeply passionate, but also usually given very little resources, but plenty of parameters and deliverables, usually without much of that teacher's input, and certainly without the child's. By tools of oppression, I mean forcing children to engage in curricula that deliberately, pervasively omits black, indigenous, and people of color contributions and knowledge systems from narratives about history and the present. <laughs> so in recognizing all of that, our daughter's first two years of schooling is when mad question asking really got going. <laughs> And as a result of those questions, today our daughters Marley and Sage are 15 and 13 and they do not get good grades. No honor rolls, no impressive test scores. They do not excel in school. They don't go to school at all because part of our raising free people practice happens through unschooling. And when we made that shift, my partner Chris and I had to redesign the entire structure of our lives to focus more on shared housing, more public transportation, and looking at ways to generate income that wasn't based on being in a particular place. The term for that design today is called digital nomad. So we had no idea how our lives were gonna work out, but mad question asking turned feelings of chaos into clarity, and we became unschooling digital nomads. So unschooling for some background is a form of self-directed education. And the term unschooling was coined by an author and educator back in the 70s called John Holt. And it is different than homeschooling in that it doesn't enforce any particular curricula or have predetermined ideas of what children should learn. And if you've heard anything about unschooling, odds are you've heard, Unschooling equals unparenting. Lord of the flies, utter chaos that can only work out for the most privileged among us. I keep hearing that if you are not rich, if you are not white, or if you can't afford to stay at home, then you can't unschool. Word? <laughs> because my nearly three years of public conversations with other unschooling families is actually showing us that unschooling often equals liberation work the work of raising free people in community, even and particularly among the least privileged. My own definition of unschooling is a child-trusting, anti-oppression, love-centered approach to living and learning. It's so much more than an educational model. It's a way of life, and it's rooted in consent, respect, and confident autonomy. For many families, unschooling is helping children to build their self-confidence. They fail at things without being shamed for it. They check in with their own bodies instead of being told when to eat or when to go pee. And they're developing language and practice for recognizing how their own biases can be harmful to other people and how to do better. So, perhaps by now you got mad questions for me, right? What do you kids do all day, Akila? Is this even legal? What about college? Can single parents do it? Yes, that's mad question asking, keep going. And I'll bring us right back to that very first question. 
Are children inherently untrustworthy? No. And how can I say that with such clarity? Mad question asking. Because mindful questions and trustful practices, like the decision to raise free people, is helping so many of us to recognize and even disrupt other forms of oppression. These biases and isms that we experience, but now we have the language, the practice, the means, the support to start choosing something different. So I'm encouraging each and every one of you to start developing your own mad question asking practice today because we cannot keep using tools of oppression and expect to raise free people. So we must examine privilege and power, particularly in our relationships with children. Thank you.